it's Kim and welcome to my YouTube channel with another process video today using Uniquely Creative Full Bloom collection which is available from Embellish It, my local scrapbook store that I'm on the design team for. So if you do like this range you can get it from Embellishment either bricks and mortar store or um, online store in New Zealand. So I'm doing a picture of my two dogs who on this day were doing synchronized sleeping on the one bed. They were mirror images of each other. It was very funny when I came out in the morning. Um, so what I have got is a background with sort of a dark yellowy ochre polka dot on it. And I am cutting these strips from one of the cut apart papers and the outside edges of these layered strips look like they're torn. So they've been printed to look like they're torn. I really like them and decided that I wanted to use them on this layout, but I wasn't quite sure how I was going to use them. So I decided to cut them apart a bit more to divide them on each side. Um, and then this larger piece that I'm looking at that's on the right has like lace down the side of it. So... I'm going to do some more with that in a minute, but I wasn't 100% sure about the background. So I went through each of the papers in the collection, looking at them and trying to decide whether I wanted to change from the polka dot. But as you will see, I end up coming back to the polka dot and deciding that no, it is the right paper for this layout. Um, so I then decided that I would cut the um, lace so that it actually looked like the edge of the lace um, because the paper the strip that was behind the lace was actually a fine black and white polka dot and it just didn't look right with the polka dot background paper so I am just fussy cutting that away which wasn't that hard and I think it gives a much better effect um, on that on that side and of course uh, the other side of that strip is like that distressed um cut edge so what I've done is I'm also cutting away the black and white polka dot on this side because the lace butted up to it and distressing it again so it looks like um, just a strip of distressed paper and then printed on that paper is also some stitching so it looks quite effective um, as a torn strip looks sort of like it's been sewn down onto the page so now I'm happy with those strips I'm now going to go through um, some of the embellishments and another cut apart sheet that's in that collection to decide what I might use. And they had these really cute little black and white houses in there, which I loved. And these florals, these die cut florals. So these are in the um, die cut, the die cuts pack that comes with this collection. Um, all of these pieces are, and I really liked the title that was in that pack, Bliss. I thought it was just perfect. Um, and then there's a little sub phrase below that. I think it says something like our comfortable home or comforts of home, I think it says. Um, so that's perfect for this picture of my two dogs, my two corgis sound asleep on the lounge room floor. And I've got a couple of little label tabs with words on them to go at the top of the photo, though I do end up moving that around a bit in a moment. So um, there's also some vellum die cuts. So I'm just playing with some of those um, as to whether I will pop them into these embellishment clusters as well. And then when I go to my sheet, there's like a brass um, clip, bulldoggy type clip. And so I'm going to fussy cut that out. And then there's also this button shape, which I think will work really well on the strips on the right hand side. Um, because the other thing that comes with this collection is uh, some twine. And so I want to use the twine on this layout. So I will go back to an old technique that I used to use all the time on my layouts um, to incorporate that twine into this layout. So you'll see that in a moment. I'm just checking to see whether there's anything else I want to cut out and there isn't. So I just cut out that gold or brass clip. But now when I put that at the top of the photos, the tabs aren't going to work. So I go looking for another one and I am going to actually layer the three of them down the left side of the photo when I glue it all down. So I think I'm pretty happy with that, um, like the design of the page now. 
um, and so push everything off and get started to stick everything down. So uh, just trimming off my strip, uh, my salvage strip or zip code strip or uh, there's a few different names for it but um, I got caught out the other day working on a layout um, that was a bit lumpy bumpy and when I went to cut the strip off uh, I couldn't and so I ended up having to distress the edges because of the whole layout because I made a big mess um, trying to cut the strip off so tip is to always cut that off early in the process rather than at the end um, so I'm just um, have stuck those strips down and now I am just sticking the tabs down the edge of the photo easier to do that be now than before then when after you actually stick the photo down so stuck those on made sure and they're in the right place and now I'm just putting some um, craft foam behind the photo just to pop it up a little bit so this um, is kitty craft foam it's adhesive on one side and then the other side I just put wet glue onto yes it's funky colors but you don't see it um, I use it on items where you're not going to see it I do have some white double-sided foam tape and strips to use on items where I think you're more likely to be able to see um, or catch a glimpse of the foam underneath so just gluing those flowers down and now sticking on the brass clip um, or the brass looking clip. Um, so that's not going to quite sit in the right spot because I sort of want to add an angle at the top there. So I just need to trim away a bit of that craft foam so that I can get it to sit how I want at the top of the photo, which I have. And now I am going to move on to the cluster on the right side. So those little houses and sticking those down um, but just as I start sticking all that down I realize that um, I should have put my twine on um, because it's actually going to run underneath one of those houses so I just prop that up a bit now what I'm going to do is this um, printed button I'm going to use like a real button so I've stuck that down and I'm using my crocodile anywhere hole punch to punch a hole in the middle of that button and now I have a, a light coloured twine, as I said, that comes with this collection. Now, unfortunately, I pushed it off the bottom of the video a bit. But what I've done is I've put it down through the hole and then I've gone around the page and then back up through the hole. So I've got now two tails and a, a string wrapped around the page. So you put one tail on each side of the string and then you tie a knot in it like this and it holds the string firmly in place. Um, I will go and add a couple of staples at the top and bottom so it doesn't slip around, but that is the best way to tie a string if you're going right around a page. So as I said, you go down through the hole, around the page and then back up through the hole and you put one tail on each side of the string and tie your knot and it will not shift. It's um, very firmly attached. So here I am using my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher just to um, attach down that string with a couple of little staples, making sure my houses are in the right spot. And now I'm just going to stick down the other elements in that cluster. Uh, so more of this foam um, to pop things up. Um, it doesn't give too much dimension, but just a little bit. And I think it adds a really nice interest to the layout if there is a little bit of dimension. As I said, this doesn't make this layout uh, particularly lumpy bumpy, but it's just enough to really give it a lift. And then there's this very su super cute little bow, which I'm going to put over the hole in that tag because it's like a... Um, where you could put string, but since I've got that cute little ribbon, I'm just going to stick it on the tag there. Now with the tails of this twine, I'm just going to wrap it down around the uh, twine that's tied, tied around the page so that the tails are tucked neatly and stay where I want them to. Um, I'm checking out the layout now and I decide that it's a little bit empty and it needs something something added to it so there's a die that comes with this collection which I really like which is like a distressed messy um crisscross 
background crisscross grid grid messy grid background so I've decided I'm going to cut some of that out and so I've just pulled out my uh, trusty die cutting machine um, and I use a magnetic mat which I love because I am far from a uh, super uh, knowledgeable die cutter I um, in fact I had intended to cut this the other way um, because I wanted what I thought I wanted the lighter side up but I must have known because in reality the pink look keeps better and so the fact that I cut the paper around the wrong way actually worked in my favour. Uh, so I do use um, a healing, one of my mats is a healing cutting mat and the other is a magnetic mat and it does make my life easier. So I just cut that die cut in half and I'm putting half at the top of the photo and half at the bottom of the photo. So it just looks like it's running down below the photo and now I have to stick on this clip yet again, but now it is going to stay in the one spot. And I think that that pink grid underneath the photo really highlights the photo and creates, gives it more dominance on the page um, to balance out that cluster on the right hand side. And so now I'm just going to add some splatters, but as I go to clear some space to make some splatter uh, liquid, I remember I've got some of these little vellum die cut pieces. And so I add a couple of the vellum flowers to the clusters, one on each side, which is just a nice little finishing touch. So just some glue to stick those down. Um, and they stick quite well with a, a wet glue. Um, so I am using Art Glitter Glue, which is my glue of preference with a fine metal applicator tip on that. Um, so I have used the new um, Distress Oxide ink from Tim Holtz, which I'm trying to think of what it's called and I can't, which is bad of me, but it is the new apricot pink color. It's also available from Embellish It. So what I do is squish out a bit of the ink, add some water to it, mix it together with a paintbrush and splatter it on. It gives you much more control than if you're trying to spray because you risk a way too heavy spray. Tip is to always cover the photo because when you don't, you will always get splatters on it and it you usually end up on their face. Um, so what I'm doing is putting it down, using a paper towel to just mop it up. Now, when I thought I had finished this layout, I actually came back in later and added gold splatters to it as well. Um, and you'll see those in the close-up photos. So there's some photos coming up now. Um, and thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you like my videos, it would be fantastic if you subscribed and caught up with me regularly. I apologize. It has been a while since my last video, but I have had COVID. So it did slow me down a bit for a while there, but I seem to be bouncing back now. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in with me and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Bye.